Hi, this is Dr. John Wang. Welcome to HSS Florida. We are honored that you have entrusted us with your orthopedic care. Thank you for your time and attention over the next few minutes as we go over some important information prior to your hip replacement surgery. I want to go over with you some important and frequently asked questions such as, what is hip replacement surgery, the goals of surgery, the post-operative plan, the appointment and testing needs, the equipment needs, the medication needs, and the general timeline of events. Hip arthritis is a progressive disease which causes the normal ball and socket hip joint to become degenerated with worn out cartilage and bone on bone articulation. The typical symptoms of advanced hip arthritis include pain, stiffness, and instability. The symptoms can progress over time and cause difficulties with activities of daily living and decreased quality of life. When the symptoms are persistent despite various conservative treatments, a hip replacement surgery becomes indicated. In simple terms, a hip replacement surgery is the process of shaving and trimming away the worn out ball and socket hip joint. We would then replace that with a new ball and a new socket. In between the new ball and socket will be a liner which will act as the new cartilage. The typical hip replacement surgery takes about one hour and as previously discussed we will use various computer or robotic assistive technologies to be as precise and accurate as possible. Ultimately, the goal of hip replacement surgery is to alleviate the symptoms which are limiting daily activities and reducing the quality of life. We anticipate great improvements in pain and function. Now, I will turn the education over to our nurse coordinator for further information regarding your total hip replacement. Thank you for your time and attention. My name is Ian, and I'm the nurse navigator at Good Samaritan Medical Center. We will be discussing your needs after a total hip replacement in this presentation. We will arrange for a therapist to come to your home after your surgery. Typically, the physical therapist will visit you at home two to three times a week for two weeks, and a nurse will visit you once a week for two weeks to assess your medications and incision. Insurance companies will not authorize use of a skilled nursing facility or acute rehab to meet these needs. Even if you live alone, creating your post-op plan includes preparing extra meals, medication tracking, assistance with your dressing, cleaning, grocery shopping, and even pet care need to be considered to make your recovery as smooth and successful as possible. Having a support or coach, may it be from a family member or friend, is incredibly important and necessary for your safety and encouragement during your recovery. We suggest having someone with you to provide this support for up to 18 hours a day for the first week after your surgery. These are not medical needs, and as a result, Medicare and all major commercial plans do not provide coverage for these needs. If you would like additional resources for private care, please request this and we may email you additional information. Coaching and support needed after surgery. If you do not already live with someone that can be your coach for at least 18 hours a day, you will need to make arrangements and plan for this support. The support can be provided by one person or by multiple people. Your support person can come and go throughout the day, so as long as your total time alone is not more than six hours a day. If you are unable to arrange family or friends, neighbors, to help meet this need, we do have a list of companies that can be provided for this service. These services are not medical needs and therefore insurance companies do not cover this service. It is an out-of-pocket expense to the patient. You will need to arrange a ride to the hospital for surgery and arrange a ride for pickup after discharge. A rideshare driver is not an acceptable form of transportation home for safety reasons. You will need to arrange a ride for your two-week post-op appointment as well. Typically driving time recommended for the left side is roughly three to four weeks 
and the right side is around four weeks. These timeframes are recommended due to decreased reaction time and safety. Home environment preparation. Please make sure that your home is clutter free and ensure you have wide walking paths, double sided tape for any small rugs that can move or that could be a tripping hazard. Night lights for bedrooms, bathrooms, and hallways increase safety. And we recommend you move items that you use most frequently to a height no lower than your knees and no higher than your shoulders. All testing and clearance appointments should be scheduled for 21 to 28 days before your surgery for your safety. If testing and clearances are not completed and received at two weeks before the date of your surgery, your surgery may need to be rescheduled to a later date. For easy accessibility for your surgery, it is recommended that we use technology that has not yet been approved by insurance companies due to the fact that they deem its use to be experimental and or investigative. Total joint replacements have been performed successfully for many years without these advancements, but this technology allows for highly consistent and reproducible results by allowing for advanced precision and accuracy throughout the surgery. If you think of it as a target, a perfectly aligned knee occurs at the bullseye of the target, and this technology provides guardrails that help you narrow in on the target consistently every time. We use multiple technologies that are chosen to create a custom plan for your needs, but they fall into one of the two categories listed below. Navigation systems focus more on increased accuracy, while robotic systems focus more on increased precision. Some systems include components of both. If you think back to our target example, the illustration below will help you spot the difference between accuracy and precision. Equipment needs. You will be receiving a prescription for a rolling walker in the white surgery folder provided to you at the time of booking your surgery. This walker needs to have two wheels in the front and two posts in the back. Please do not purchase a three or four wheel walker or a walker with a seat please use the walker that is shown on this slide. It is recommended to use a form of ice therapy, whether it is an ice machine or gel ice packs. Ice machines are not deemed a medical necessity, therefore will not be covered by insurance, even with a prescription. Other potential needs may include a motion machine, a raised toilet seat, a reacher, or a shower chair. Medication needs for your surgery. You will be prescribed a pain medication, a blood thinner medication, a stomach protectant, as well as a stool softener and or laxative if you are going home on the day of your surgery. We will have you pick up your post-op medications from your pharmacy the day before your surgery. Two weeks before surgery. Within two weeks of your surgery, please avoid direct contact with anyone that is known to be ill and try to avoid moderate to large gatherings to decrease the chance of any illness. Head to toes. Protect your skin from potential cuts, burns, abrasions, or rashes. Also, please confirm your post-surgery plans with your support team and complete the final preparation of your home. You will receive a pre-op call from a nurse, which will be myself, Ian, and will occur 13 to 16 days before your surgery. The goals of this call will be to confirm that all testing and clearances are done. Post-op medication assessment is completed, confirming your discharge plan, and then finally answering any outstanding questions that you may have regarding your surgery. The day before your surgery, please use the pre-surgery shower scrub pictured on this slide. HibaCleanse is a skin prep cleanser used to help prevent infection. Please shower with soap from the neck down the night before and morning of your surgery. Do not use it on your face or near your genital region. You should use approximately half the bottle, evenly distributing it all over your body from the neck down. Rinse off completely. Post-op medications. As a reminder, for those going home on the same day of surgery, 
please pick up your post-op medications from your pharmacy. The day of surgery. Please do not eat anything after midnight the day before your surgery. On the morning of your surgery, drinking liquids must be stopped at least four hours prior to your hospital arrival time. Acceptable clear liquids include Gatorade, Powerade, or Propel electrolyte drinks. Pre-admission nurse call. You will receive a phone call the day before your surgery from the pre-admission testing nurse to review your medical history and medications. The PAT nurse will inform you when your last dose of your normal home medications will be prior to surgery. The PAT nurse will also inform you of your hospital arrival time when they call you. Our orthopedic operating rooms are located in the Victor Ferris building, which is attached to our hospital and located at 1411 North Flagler Drive, West Palm Beach, Florida 33401. If you are dropped off, you will enter through the Victor Ferris building main lobby. Take the elevators to the second floor and check in with the pre-op front desk located inside the outpatient surgery office. If you park in the garage, take the elevators to the second floor and cross the walkway bridge to the Victor Ferris building and check in with the pre-op front desk located inside the outpatient surgery office. From there, our pre-op team will start the admission process. Your company or support person will be able to wait in our surgical waiting areas. After your surgery has been completed, you will recover in our post anesthesia care unit. If you are scheduled as a same day discharge, your surgeon will clear you for discharge if you meet our safety protocol criteria. If you are scheduled for a 23 hour observation, our post operative care team will clear you for transport to our designated orthopedic unit on the fifth floor to recover from surgery overnight. This is where you will get a chance to rest and work directly with our orthopedic care team who will prepare you for next day discharge and a successful recovery. This will include post-operative consults by our orthopedic and medicine teams, nursing care, and mobilization with our physical and occupational therapy teams. You'll also have a chance to speak with dietary, EVS, and case management. Once cleared, our nurses will prepare you for discharge and will review further discharge instructions and inform you to contact your transportation for pickup outside the main entrance of Good Samaritan Medical Center. Your incision will not contain any staples or sutures that need to be removed. These sutures will be dissolvable. You may have steri strips which look like little pieces of white tape on your incision that will fall off naturally or be removed. At your first follow-up visit, you will have a dressing on top of your incision. This dressing is water resistant and will stay in place roughly seven to 14 days based on your individualized instructions from your provider. Therapy. Formal visits by the therapist two to three times a week for the first two weeks and self-directed home exercise program on the days you do not have formal therapy will need to be performed in the interim for the first two weeks after your surgery. Having a pain management plan is very important. Cycles of gentle motion followed by periods of rest are very important. Using your ice therapy, which could be your ice machine or ice packs, roughly 30 minutes on, 30 minutes off on a continuous interval is extremely helpful for the first few days to minimize swelling and for comfort purposes. Elevation of your knee and leg will also be helpful for swelling purposes. Medications will also be discussed as part of your plan to manage your pain. Exact medications will be discussed with you based on your current medical conditions. You will also have a blood clot prevention medication. Again, you will receive individualized instructions, such as your medication needs, performing ankle pumps to increase blood circulation and flow, changing your position frequently, as well as walking and performing the exercises as instructed by physical therapy.
What is normal after surgery? The first 48 hours, you will still be clearing and processing anesthesia throughout your body. You are starting new medications and will be experiencing shifts in your body fluids. You may experience the following, dizziness or lightheaded, feeling nausea, vomiting, or a decreased appetite. You should change positions slowly. Stay well hydrated and drink at least 64 ounces of water or Gatorade daily. Eat small to moderate sized meals with a snack in between and always have something to eat before taking a pain medication to help prevent any nausea. Continued redness, warmth, swelling, and bruising are all expected findings after the surgery. Most of these are not immediately present after surgery. They may start to appear on post-op days one to three and may get worse over days two to five. The swelling and bruising can extend up into the thigh as well as all the way down to your feet and toes. It can take 10 to 14 days before you start to see signs of improvement, and it can take six or more weeks for these signs of healing to be mostly resolved. Mild to moderate amounts of swelling may still be present for three to six months. Gravity tends to pull the fluid down and it settles into your ankle and foot, so this is normal. Continuing to elevate as much as possible will help your body slowly start to reabsorb the excess fluid and the swelling will eventually decrease. Sleeping after surgery. Insomnia is common and most patients find that they can sleep uninterrupted for two to four hours at a time. However, you will likely be able to fall asleep again after a position change, a short walk to decrease the stiffness, going to the bathroom, or eating a light snack and taking a pain pill. You can make up lost sleep with the addition of one or two short naps during the day. Low-grade fevers less than 102 degrees Fahrenheit can be expected. If greater than 102 degrees Fahrenheit, please notify the medical team. Bleeding that is contained within the surgical dressing is okay. If it begins to permeate the dressing and come out, please also notify the medical team and or your home health nurse. Constipation can occur when taking your pain medications. Having a lower activity level, dehydration, anesthesia, and again your pain medications will all slow down movement of your bowels. We recommend that all patients drink at least 64 ounces of water a day. We also recommend that all patients start taking an over-the-counter stool softener twice a day until you are off all of your narcotic pain medication. If you are drinking the recommended amount of water and using the stool softener, but have not had a bowel movement by the morning of post-op day three, please take an over-the-counter laxative, such as Miralax or Milk of Magnesia. when to notify the medical team and call 911. If you do experience any chest pain, shortness of breath, confusion, slurred speech, or weakness on one side of your body, please call 911. If you have a fever over 102 degrees Fahrenheit, red streaks up or down your leg, severe calf pain that is made worse by doing the ankle pump exercises, or any bleeding that is not contained within the occlusive dressing, please call your surgeon's office. Two week follow up appointment. At this appointment, we will check your incision and remove any remaining steri strips. We will assess your readiness to transition to outpatient therapy. If you are ready to transition, we will provide you an outpatient therapy prescription which you can take to any location recommended by your surgeon's office. Also, we will address the earliest point in which you can return to driving, return to work, return to traveling, and or begin aquatic therapy. Please write down any questions that you have that I did not address in this presentation. We will go over your questions in the pre-op phone call roughly two weeks prior to your surgery. Thank you so much, and we look forward to seeing you soon.